Hello, everybody. It's Wednesday at 2. Thank you for joining me through our live open house, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or watching the replay. I do appreciate you taking the time to join me while I talk to you about our Vintage Sewing Machine Mastery Program. Um, I'm going to get started here on our presentation in just a minute. If you are, um, wherever, wherever, wherever you're watching, if in the United States or otherwise, I would appreciate if you'd let us know where you are. Our program reaches um, the a nationwide and Canada, and we do have someone in the UK as well. We are working on branching out to other countries. Our struggles are chemicals and machines are different, so we're still working that out, but we'd love to know where you're at. And you can't see him, but Paul is here monitoring comments for me in Facebook and YouTube. So again, thank you for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my um, slides here and get things going. All right. All right. So I'm talking about the Vintage Sewing Machine Mastery Program, and this is our program that's obviously focused on vintage and antique machines. Um, we're the first people to build a program like this. And at this point, it's literally out of necessity, not luxury anymore. So um, the reason I do such a lengthy presentation for those of you that are curious is because it's a lot to grasp. We are moving into a digital age. Um, and the reason that our virtual programs are necessary is because it's the only way we can continue to support you from a distance long term rather than you coming and taking a one day or three day workshop and then going home and being on your own. Um, but also with travel and everything else, it's really become uh, an issue, you know, making things happen. So we're doing everything we can to fill this void um, in our industry. You know, before COVID, we already had an issue, especially vintage and antique machines with a shortage of technicians. Um, and now it's even worse because so many have left the industry. And what we mostly have left other than the few independent shops are sewing machine dealers, which some of them will still do restoration or vintage and antique machines, but the majority of them are focused on just keeping up with warranty work. And having been through um, Viking, Janome and Brother training, I can tell you that they don't teach you anything remotely close to what we handle in this workshop. So that's why we do what we do. It has been a process and we are Let's see, we opened our doors in November, so we're about nine months into this particular program, and we currently have 110 members, so it has been a very strong and a, an amazing experience. Um, for so long, I feel like I was kind of on an island um, because this was born out of obsession, not really a career path, and I don't feel alone anymore. So there are other people in this group that are just as obsessed and intrigued and always learning the same way that I am. So with that introduction, um, I just want to make sure that, it, so I don't waste your time, that this is the right place for you. Our VSMM program is for you if you own a vintage or antique machine or and want to clean them or maintain your, them yourself. Uh, if you plan on acquiring your first machine or adding to your collection, because I really don't know too many people that own just one. Um, it's usually in the double digits <laughs> at this point. Um, if you want to find old machines that need work and bring them back to life. If you want to consider having a small side business, retirement income, or just have fun. Um, if you want to work with an organization like a church, a charity, a refugee center, um, the Senior Citizen Center, anything that you can donate your time and your skills um, to keep machines going, restore them to donate, we cover all of those. And I do want to make a note here that this program is what we consider a stepping stone for those of you that want to go beyond vintage and antique. This is a really, really frequently asked question for me. And we started with this program before the modern program because this program will get you used to being inside of a machine. I feel like there's a certain amount of anxiety if you've never been inside a machine and haven't worked with one before, because most of us have been scolded by um, a grandmother or a technician or somebody about being inside of your machine and understanding how it works. So this is sort of an introduction into modern machines. It will get you comfortable. But especially for those of you that want to build a business, it's very easy to build a business in this program while you're learning. So you can do them side by side. Um, with modern machines, the, the learning curve is a little different. So I just want to make mention of that and um, our purpose. So with our program, 
Um, my main goal is for you to be self-reliant and confident. And again, this goes back to the severe shortage of knowledgeable and capable technicians to handle vintage and antique machines. Um, so it's not really a luxury anymore. Going forward, I feel like it's going to be scarier to leave your machine with an unknown person. Uh, to help you avoid mishaps that happens with all the free advice on the internet. Um, if you're in the Facebook groups and watching YouTube, um, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's really hard to, uh, to you know, shuffle through all that information and figure out what's correct. Uh, I would love for you to kind of put me out of business. People ask all the time, if you're teaching your skills, what's that going to do to your business? I can promise you that there could be 10 of me and we will still have more business than we can handle. Um, confidently restore and bring back to life any number of vintage sewing machines. So this program, you're not coming in with just one sewing machine. You can learn of a, a limitless number of sewing machines in our program. And we talk about your personal goals a lot in our program. So we're still in our beginning stages, but it's very important to me that we help you meet whatever your goal is. So when you come into our program, there is a short survey for you to fill out that's going to ask you a few things about um, what machines you have, machines you might want to have, what do you want to accomplish? Are you just trying to take care of your own? Are you just looking at a hobby like you like to tinker? Do you want to build a small business? And that really helps us to build resources for you to um, to meet your goals faster than, you know, just letting it drag out. And then we do have an option for a free 10 minute private Zoom call. If you'd like to um, begin a personal level face to face, we always offer that to you. It's not it's just it's optional. It's not required. So you do not need to. Again, these are more frequently asked questions. Um, I get a lot of, uh, I would say my my typical audience is between 45 and 65 plus. Um, and a lot of people ask or say, I'm not an engineer. I've never really worked on cars. I haven't worked on other things. And I can tell you, I didn't either. Um, I don't come from a mechanically inclined background. Um, I don't. I wasn't doing anything with tools. So you don't need to be an expert with tools. And in fact, um, when you go to purchase tools, you probably have most of what you need in a drawer somewhere. You usually need mostly flathead screwdrivers. And then you may need to add in some picks and tweezers and some very low cost purchase items. But it's not an expensive investment to get involved with vintage machines. We do, um, with tools, we do recommend as you grow, there's some things you can add as you're comfortable. But there is like a must have that's a very small list a good to have that's a little bit larger of a list, and then another, boy, it would sure be nice to have these things, short list. Um, there's same thing with chemicals and cleaning materials. We do give you a range of options on what you use in your machines. And we have a recommended list, um, like an absolutely do not use list, but you can, depending on your region, there are always things you can get easily. And you don't have to have a workshop or a workbench or a garage. Um, I started at my kitchen table. Again, this was not meant to be a career, but it is. And I eventually moved into a bigger space with a workbench and then eventually into a public space. But you can do this anywhere. In fact, um, one of our members is building his business out of a third story condo unit uh, in a retirement center. So uh, when I say you can make this work, you can make this work. So our machine guidelines to cover what we do include in this workshop. Um, we only work with home domestic machines, so no industrial commercial. But that being said, there's not a lot of information out there for industrial and commercial. And we get phone calls and emails all the time asking. You can take what you learn in this workshop and apply it to those machines, but I don't specifically teach you servo motors. Um, there are some components that are different, but you can draw information from this program and apply it to those machines. And I can help you any way I can, but I like to leave a disclaimer that we don't specifically cover industrial machines. Um, it has to be a lock stitch machine. So no chain stitches, um, toy machines, sergers, overlockers. For sergers and overlockers, we do have a future program for that. Um, the Again, the other ones you can still draw experience and things from this program and apply it to those, but I don't teach you anything about getting them to work um, properly. Um, but, you know, like if you have a Wilcox and Gibbs or a um, Wheeler and Wilson that's a chain stitch, the same theories apply. It's just a functioning machine that's different. And then we don't work on computerized or electronic machines. And this is a gray area because what you see in the bottom left corner there is the um, 
the Athena 2000, which was late 60s, early 70s, and kind of like the for like the the foreground of computerized machines. So it has electronic components in it, and they do age out. So if you have one of those machines, again, you can take what you learn in this workshop and apply it to the mechanics of the machine. But if your board is bad and your electronics are not working, I don't cover that in this workshop. Usually your only course of action is to find another old machine that's still working and take the parts out. And it's a it's kind of a losing battle. The other downside is the gears in that, which I'll cover in just a minute. So that's a gray area. Um, so we also don't do gear replacement in any machine, um, which means touch and sew, merit machines, some stylist. There's a, a small number of nylon plastic gear machines. Um, touch and sews we see. Uh, in fact, we just moved our storage unit. We have, I think I've counted up to 30 dead touch and sew machines that we've acquired over the years. Um, the gears fail in them because they are plastic nylon, um, but that requires a lot of timing adjustments and extremely advanced procedures that we will cover down the road in a future workshop. So you can still, if you have one of those machines, you can still apply what you learn in this workshop to a functioning machine, but we cannot help you replace the gears. Also, we do not, so timing adjustments, is, uh, adjustments are included, but we also don't cover full disassembly and reassembly of sewing machines. Uh, there are at least two workshops I know of that you can attend in person where you do take the entire machine apart and put it back together. And while I feel like there can be a place for that, in 13 years, I've never once had to disassemble a machine to make it work again. And that includes one that's like frozen like cement. So um, the complexities of having to take it apart and put it back together are so broad that I, that's not something that I can handle in this workshop. But also, I just feel like it's probably 99% of the time very unnecessary. So if you already have a machine that's disassembled, I would say we're probably not going to cover that in this workshop. So just to give you a quick overview of what I'm going to be talking about today, we're going to talk about the SDOCS method, which is the same procedure we use every single day in our service shop, um, our hybrid learning method, because again, this is a new way of learning for our industry. Um, so we can tell you how we're going to learn at your own pace on your schedule. And then you're going to hear um, about some of our current members and see their accomplishments. I do want to mention if you do enroll by midnight tonight, technically Eastern time, but if you're on the West Coast and you get enrolled before 12 p.m., I'm sorry, 12 a.m. your time, we'll still um, allow that. But we do give away our Blue Creeper cleaner. It's not a required thing, but anybody who uses it tells you this is um, the answer to all of our prayers. This little bottle here lasts me um, probably at three months. And I do, on average, 20 machines a week. So you're looking about 80 a month. Um, it's replaced kerosene. It has replaced every single cleaner. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But if you enroll today, I will ship you your bottle for free. Has to be within the U.S. because of customs, though. All right. So if you have questions, please feel free to, to leave a comment, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. Paul is going to monitor those questions. And I will answer them at the end. Um, and also, if something, if you're considering enrolling and something comes up and you have a question after today's event, if you go onto the website on your computer, what you'll see here down in the bottom right corner, this little chat button is going to pop up after you've been on there for about eight seconds. If you will use that button, you will get me directly. It's going to ask you to type in whatever your question is. Um, I try to be there for everyone. If I miss you, I will email you your reply. And if you're using a phone or a tablet, if you'll go to the Vintage Sewing Machine page and scroll down, you're going to see this little Let's Chat button. And both of those, you'll get me directly. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have or any doubts or anything I can help you with. So now that we've got all that out of the way, if you've not uh, worked with me before, my name is Andy. Um, to tell you a little bit about myself, I mostly hand piece quilts which for some reason surprises people because I work with sewing machines. Um, so I like to hand piece and then I like to free motion quilt on a domestic machine, just my passion. Um, I have my husband and I, Paul, have a 13 year old boy and he has bigger feet than I think both of us at this point. Um, I was born and raised in St. Louis, but I've been in Georgia for 20 years now. I am definitely devoted to donating as much time uh, and sewing machines to charities, programs, and young people as possible. This is absolutely my life's work. And I do have a slight obsession with any and all sewing machines, but mostly the old reliable ones. 
So what I do is I service, repair, and restore sewing machines professionally. I've been restoring for 13 years and working on modern machines for eight or nine. Um, it is our sole family income. We teach others now to service, repair, and restore sewing machines out of pure necessity. And we help you to be less reliant on, on technicians like myself that use knowledge as power. This is a real sticking point. If you listen to any of my lectures or have been to the website, I'm very big on being transparent and as helpful as possible, not to hoard all of my information and make you beg for it. And I like to provide as much accurate and detailed knowledge to people that are just getting started as sewists and quilters. This became imperative during COVID um, when mask making brought in a whole new generation of uh, sewists. So again, because accurate information has been so hard to get in our industry, I do want to give you a little backstory of how I got here. Um, I'll try to make this brief as possible, but I just want to illustrate, I started exactly where you are. If you're just curious or interested, this is exactly where I was. And through a lot of hard work and a lot of obstacles, I've climbed my way to this point and I want to make the learning curve a lot shorter for you. So in 2009, um, I'd already been sewing for a couple of years and um, like everyone else, the featherweight bug kind of bit me, but the reason I wanted one was, first of all, they're cute and they're light. Um, and I did a lot of classes at the time was uh, I was learning to do foundation piecing. And my instructor had one that she was doing straight stitches. And it was like the most perfect straight stitch ever. And so for my first Mother's Day, Paul bought me my first featherweight. Well, then it sat on the shelf for a long time because as cute as it was, it was scary because it seemed so much more delicate than what I was used to. So in June of 2009, I was in a local quilt shop and she mentioned, you know, knowing that I was struggling with getting started, that there was a specialist that teaches a workshop on service and maintenance. And um, she was going to do a workshop and that usually gets you over the hump because if you're in the machine, then you can kind of like build a relationship with it. So I took the workshop and it totally blew my mind. Um, looking back now, it's so funny because it feels so simplistic, but that first time you get into a machine and you're the one cleaning and caring for it, you do, as cheesy as it is, you do kind of build a relationship with that machine. And I, I think every machine I've worked on since has felt like that. So that workshop really sparked a uh, curiosity in me. And Paul and I were already antique people by that point. Um, one of our pastimes when our son was really young was we would just stroll through antique malls. Well, when this is on your mind, then you start to notice that there's other vintage machines out there. There's, you know, Singers and there's Kenmore's and then there's all these Japanese ones that look like um, car radio dials from the 50s. And so it was a natural transition from just being curious into, oh, there's a nice machine. Let's buy that one. And then you have 20 machines in your house and not sure how to make any of them work. So if that's you, I can relate. <laughs> um, so by November of 2009, because the featherweight class was so intriguing, I started doing some obsessive research on vintage machines. And there were a few resources, but if you think about where the internet was in 2009, we didn't really, we barely had Facebook, I think. Um, we didn't have as much as we have now. Now we've tipped to the other side and there's almost too much. So I dug and dug and dug and I tried to contact people. I called service shops and of course no one would talk to me. And then someone connected me to a gentleman in Texas um, that was closing his shop and retiring and he agreed to work with me virtually. Now, when I say virtually, I don't mean like this. I mean, like I would send him an email with some pictures and be like, can you help me figure this out? And like maybe three weeks later, I'd get an email back with half the information I needed. But through what little bit he did, he helped me piece together how sewing machines work, how to fix them, how to approach them and helped me build an intuitive nature about them. Um, so in 2011, word had started getting out through quilt guilds. I was very, very involved in quilt guilds. And um, people were contacting me saying, I have my grandmother's treadle in the basement. No one knows how to fix it or what to do with it. I have my grandmother's singer 503. It was constant. So overnight, it became like machines would show up on my doorstep or I would pick one up when I'd go to a guild meeting, bring it home, get it working and take it back. And so I had a nice little side income that was building while I was learning. And everybody knew this up front. I was like, I'm still learning, but they would rather have had me work on it than it just sit there and, and, and not be functional. So this kept growing and growing 
And I had a full side business um, through 2013. And I found another gentleman through the first gentleman that worked with me on modern machines. And this is where I started to learn timing and advanced repairs. But to be transparent between 2000, what, 10, when I started in 2013, my entire business was not built on timing adjustments or any type of advanced repair because vintage machines don't usually require that. There's a few exceptions with nylon gears and maybe a metal machine that's been messed with, but I built my entire business, even in modern machines to a point, um, cleaning and lubricating and doing general maintenance. I wasn't doing timing. All right. So it wasn't until between 2013 and 2015 that I started studying timing and understanding the concepts. And it literally took me every day of those three years to grasp the concept of timing. So I at that point, um, I went into a partnership with a local friend who was buying a quilt shop that went out of business or was closing. And in exchange for running the quilt shop with her, they allowed me to build my business within the quilt shop. And then that's when everything exploded. So little did I know how much need there was for machine repair and service. But honestly, it's been this many years later. And I would say 80% of the machines we take in are still vintage machines because that's what we're known for. Um, we do a good number of modern machines. I do all machines, but more often than not, the machines we get are vintage because no one else works on them. So in 2016, the work got to be too much. Somebody said, you know, you need to hire someone. There was literally no one to hire. Um, and that was a rude awakening for us because now we have machines streaming in the door and slowly trickling back out. So Paul left his job and we really thought about how do you handle the growth? And so at that time, we started thinking, what if we had an apprenticeship program? What if we started teaching people our skills? So by 2017, we did build the concept for this academy and started testing the workshops in person. And we started with the featherweight workshop, um, which is the more simplistic. And then we tried our hand at the vintage cleaning workshop. And every time we posted one, it was sold out instantly. So we knew that there was a need and a want for this. Um, and so we kept building that and we started thinking about doing the virtual aspect and then COVID happened. So right as we were about to launch this virtually, we were in up to our neck in machines. COVID happened. We were working seven, six to seven days a week, 12 hours, most of them. I was bringing machines home with me. We just could not keep up. We were at 12 weeks turnaround time and stayed there for two years. So that put everything on the back burner. And here we are. But like I said, what we went through with COVID really took so many people out of the industry that now um, we're realizing there's a big surge and a need. So that's my path um, of how I got here. And what I have constantly run into is that we we are now used to uh, relying on YouTube and Facebook groups for information. And there is really good stuff out there. I There are some groups I belong to that I feel like are better than others. But most of the time, it's kind of like sewing advice. It's like the game of telephone. Someone's going to, you know, a technician's going to tell someone, this is what you do in XYZ situation. That person's going to say, oh, I heard about that and tell their quilt guild. But every time that the information's passed on, it's kind of watered down. So we're trying to be a solution for that. And I do want to give some examples. Um, one of my hobbies when I'm trying to uh, decompress at night, because I can't seem to let go, is I like to go through the Facebook groups. And when people ask questions, I like to try and be a help. With no strings attached, I just like to offer some help. And um, it's getting harder and harder to do that because the toxic nature of some of these groups is really hard. I don't want to argue with people. So it's like, here's advice, take it or leave it. I don't care. But this person posted in um, one of the vintage sewing machine groups and said, I just finished cleaning my Singer 1590. What can I use to shine her up safely? She's looking dull right now. Thank you. This question comes up a lot. And the answers are, the opinions are like elbows. Everybody has them. And this one had 28 comments, all varying of these answers. So we had Windex, Vaseline, Beeswax, Carnuba Wax, Zymol, lemon oil, goop, and ammonia. Now, of those options, personally, I would only entertain two of those, maybe even one. Um, but even taking that out of it, if you're asking this question because you have no idea, how do you even pick the one out of those that you should try? And what I noticed in scrolling through the comments 
was this one here. So somebody said, wipe it down with Vaseline and rub it in well. You'll have the results. I have never thought of ever putting Vaseline on the machine. I don't think it would ruin the surface, but I'm not sure they would give me the results I wanted. But more striking was the one comment that said, oh, my God, there's so many opinions. I'm glad I don't need one. And I hope you all figure it out. And I feel like this has been the takeaway for most of us that have tried to find our way in these Facebook groups. I have one other heartbreaking example. Um, I found this one last fall, right before our featherweight um, launch, uh, workshop launch. And this young lady had inherited her grandmother's 301. And she posted that it had a lot of like oil and grime stuck on it. And she asked what she should clean it with. And someone said this ammonia based cleaner, which you can get at Dollar Tree, um, and a toothbrush. And what you see in that close up where she scrubbed with the toothbrush is discoloration because the ammonia ate away at the clear coat and the paint. There's no going back from that, unfortunately, unless you have it repainted and resealed. So um, I wish that I could have reached her in time, but again, I can only offer advice. I can't really save everybody. So again, you can waste hours and hours finding the right information online. And some people enjoy the hunt of the info and some of us really just wanna to get to the good stuff. So in my opinion, machine service should be, in all cases, it should be routine, it should be methodical, and it should be a series of habits. So what I teach in all of my workshops is to help you build your intuitive nature with sewing machines. It's not just a book or a list of, a checklist of things to do, it's to help you build your intuitive nature out of based on habits. So all machines, of course, and their issues are different. So how do we approach this? And this is something we've been working on for a long time. So we've developed what we call the SDOX method. It is the exact same procedure that we use in our professional service shop. So this is not a watered down version. This is not like a cheater version. This is literally what we teach you in this program is the exact same thing that Paul and I use every single day in our shop. Um, it's a specific set of steps to clean, lubricate, make minor repairs to your machine. It focuses on simplicity so that you're constantly building a series of habits. It keeps you from missing important steps in the process and it's gonna keep all sewing machines going. All right, so we're gonna break that down here in just a minute. The S in S doc stands for setup. Um, what you see on the right is just a screenshot of some of the modules that are in the curriculum. When you go to the um, Vintage Sewing Machine Mastery page and you click through um, to, yes, I want to enroll, it's gonna actually take you to a full list of what our curriculum is. It's gonna show you the actual modules. Um, and we have a lot. So this includes tools that you're gonna need, uh, materials, cleaning materials, chemicals, how to get set up. Um, we have basic checklists in there, information when you add, wanna add tools to your, your um, collection. Then we go through disassembling covers, which means on some machines taking the top covers off, how to get into the machine, how to approach a cast iron machine where there's very little entry point. We do break things up between cast iron machines and all other machines just based on their nature. The O stands for overall clean and lubricate. This is where you're gonna spend probably the bulk of your time. This is just a small sample of what's in there. But again, we break up all of our modules so that you can easily find what you need. That means you're not going through three hours of one video trying to find that like one two minute piece that you needed that you saw somewhere. We break everything up into basically a task. So um, again, that's where you're gonna spend most of your time. C is covers and external, which means putting the covers back on and dealing with external parts. So that means the upper tension assembly, um, polishing the parts on the outside, um, let's see, the hand wheel clutch, installing the motor belt, bobbin cases, um, anything that's on the outside of the machine. We also cover a little bit in motor and electrical in this one, but we do have a separate workshop that's included with your purchase that specifically covers motor service and rewiring. And then we can talk about cleaning the exterior of the machine. So what you should do to the finish and the surface. I should also note, in case anybody asks, we do not cover at this point stripping a machine and repainting it or doing decals but we're kind of considering a route like that. There are several people in our workshop that are already experimenting. So if we can partner with someone that would like to teach those skills, we would definitely do that. S stands for sew and adjust, which um, is very cut and dry, but it's very specific. So we talk about proper bobbins for your machine, um, sewing and testing, the getting the balance on the tension. Then we do case studies and bonus modules. There's, we're always dumping new things into those sections. So it's a lot to take in, but I wanna give you um, 
an idea of what this looks like. When you roll in the workshop, this is the on-demand library. And to the left are all the modules. And you're going to click through on the one that you want. And on the right is where the video is going to show up. So you can do pause, you can forward, you can go backward. Um, I do have the sound muted on this one, but it is there. So you can see I'm just kind of skipping through the videos to give you an idea. And then let's see. So you can scroll through. Let's just say that you came into the workshop and you learned on this Singer 500 just like I did. And then six months down the road, you inherit your grandmother's Kenmore. That means you can go back into these modules and skip through to the, the sections you need as a refresher or new information on a different machine. So again, I've broken it down very intricately so it's very easy for you to get into. And yeah, that's, and then I also wanna show down here, um, if I can get to that part, down in the bottom of each uh, segment, there's a place for you where you can ask questions um, that come up for you uh, during, like, if you're watching a video and you're like, oh, I never thought about that. Why is it like that? Or this is what's happening to my machine. So that's one option that you have for asking questions. And then Paul and I always go in and answer your questions. So that's what the inside of our learning library looks like. This you have access to for life. This is not, uh, this does not expire. And then I want to show you really quick. We also, our platform that hosts our uh, program has an app now that's super easy. It's called Zendler. You go in and you log in just like you would on your computer. And then you go into your workshop and it's the exact same thing. You scroll through, you find the module that you want to watch, and then you just click on it. And it's going to give you the video at the top. But what I really like is that you can expand it and um, you can make it bigger. So once you get into where you need to watch, you can make it full screen and then you can get your guidance on what you're doing. And the same thing goes for watching replays. We do our live sessions. There's always a replay in there. You can go back and view the exact same way. So I had mentioned previously about the machine uh, motor service and rewiring. We do include that in this workshop. So when you enroll, this is for all levels. This doesn't expire. It doesn't matter if you enroll today or, or a few days from now, you're going to get this with, um, with the main workshop. So in this workshop, we're going to cover bad electrical um, cords and wires, lead cords, um, all kinds of things. And these are the reasons, this is part of the reason why machines get left behind. People are scared of wires, which I get. Um, it took me, well, I'll be honest with you, I still don't deal with electrical much due to time constraints, but also because I hate electrical. Um, it's scary to me. I was electrocuted once as a kid and that stuck with me, but we go through all of the safety protocols. We go through the correct procedures on replacing wiring, how to make sure you're safe and how to do it properly. So this means that you can go to a yard sale or find a machine on Facebook that has really bad electrical wiring. And most people are willing to, to th either throw them away or give them away. And there's a huge opportunity in that. Um, so that's one thing that, that to me stands out about this workshop. It also covers all vintage motors, including potted motors, which are the gear mounted motors on Singer 1591s and 201s. And I'll show you a picture of that in just a minute. But on those machines, most often they need the wiring between the motor and the electrical block. And that is an intense process, but it's doable. Uh, and it saves machines. That's the reason those machines get thrown out. So you have access to this on-demand learning library for life as well. And then you also get live help from Paul and I, um, both in the Facebook group and our community and through our live sessions. So you're not going to have to go through the electrical alone. Even though you have the modules, when you get stuck, you're going to get a live person to say, this is what you need to do because safety is our number one concern. And then we're planning some extra motor and rewiring sessions for active members. So we'll schedule an extra Saturday where we can all gather online together at one time. And Paul will go through those procedures while you're doing it yourself in your home. And then our second bonus with our program, because I'm mentioning this because this is all good for life. You're not going to, this is not going to expire, is our business tools program. Um, this is still a work in progress, but it does offer all the forms, the same procedures, and everything I did to build my business from a hobby to my sole income. Everything is in these modules. Um, we're going to create another uh, community 
where we can handle that because not everybody wants to go into this for business and I don't blame you, but if you do, we're going to give you the tools to get there. Um, we're going to add monthly sessions for those of you that are exploring income ideas. So it's nice to have a collective of us with the same goals without feeling alone in the endeavor. Um, and I've mentioned before, our whole program is designed to help you build your business at the same time that you're building your skills. So this is not, you're not going to make an investment. And then if you move on it, it's months before, it's weeks to months before you're actually um, getting some of your investment back. And my methods are designed to keep your overhead costs as low as possible. I did not take on any debt. I didn't take on any loans, no investors, no nothing. My business was built with t-shirt quilts <laughs> and I probably needed about $500 and that was for the, my business license and some, some tools and some parts. So I, everything I teach is very lean. So I'm not going to tell you to go out and rent a space. I'm going to tell you to stay in your home as long as you can. All right. So that's included in our workshop as well. I did want to share a few things that have been said about our program. This is John who joined last November, I believe. Um, he said that he's enjoyed being a part of our curriculum and he is actually in the process of building his vintage machine program. He also likes to work on cars so they compete for his time. But I do believe John actually wants to go all the way through to modern machines. And he does run his business out of his condo in his um, retired living community. So like I said, you don't have to have a fancy space to do this. Uh, Amy joined our program as a founding member back in November. And she has since made herself official with no scraps left behind and um, is building her restoration business out of Kentucky and would also like to move into modern machines. Um, let's see, Jennifer made her business official, I think just two months ago. She joined us back in December and um, focuses almost, almost specifically on treadle machines, but she also wants to open a, um, like a cafe coffee house that has treadle machines in it so that she can teach um, vintage sewing techniques, keep that art alive and allow people to come in and use her treadle machines. So she'll also do maintenance and service and offer that as a um, as a as another stream of income. And then we have Carrie who is up in Washington state and she has a make it sew business where she focuses on vintage machine service and likes to restore them and sell them. I don't have cards for the following, but Hannah um, is building a service business alongside of her um, alterations. She's, she is very multifaceted. <laughs> Renee is in North Carolina and focuses on treadle machines. She likes the super, super shiny ones. And then Cynthia has a huge demand for old cast iron singer machines. So she likes to restore and service those for others. Um, and that's just a handful of people that have started their business since being in our program. Then I also want to mention that Joe and Heidi both use our program to assist in their business. Joe actually makes pet bedding um, in high demand. So she sells her pet bedding to local uh, pet pet stores and things of that nature. She had a handful, I think four Singer 99s that she uses to make all of her bedding, but she has no one near her to take care of her machines. And she was to the point where all four of them were having issues. So she was in a desperate state when she contacted me back in June and joined our program. And she has all of her machines going on her own. Heidi works for a, um, a charity service down in New Orleans called Rick Rack, and they take in donations and sell them. And they have a whole bunch of vintage machines that no one's been able to do anything with. So she's committed to taking our program, fixing those vintage machines and selling them for that charity. So we have a variety of people that come into our program um, with different intentions. So we've talked about um, the on-demand part on the community, you also have access to this for life. So we have a Facebook page. It's private. It's super, super, super protected. And I say that I am like a mama bear in this group. We do not. Um, it's our safe space. So it's very sacred to us. Um, but we also have a community built into the platform because I also recognize we're in a time where not everybody wants to be on social media. And I fully respect that. It's tough sometimes for me to log in and have to deal with news and political conversation, everything else when I just want to get to the sewing machines. So we do offer a safe space off of Facebook as well. And then for both of them, you can post pictures and videos and ask questions and you connect with all of us. Paul and I always come on to answer questions, but you're also going to learn from each other, which to me is the real value of our community. So to be clear, you have lifetime access to all the learning modules in the main program, the private Facebook group in the community, the motor service and rewiring learning modules, 
the business tools resources. And we also give you first access and discount on our upcoming programs. And that's because every time we launch a program, it's kind of a beta version because there's a lot of things to work out doing this virtually. So because I've already worked with you and you're in my program, this is our starting point. When we release the troubleshooting workshop next month and the, um, the modern service um, maintenance machine, <laughs> the modern maintenance machine, machine maintenance uh, workshop in um, October, late October, you will be the last group included in. And so you will all get a discount and an offer for first access to help us work out some of those bugs. And when I tell you I try to over deliver on our programs, I will give you everything I have in the scope of my time and ability. So that's one perk we have. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the live and guided learning. So when you join, you're paying for your enrollment into the program and a certain amount of membership time. The live and guided learning is your membership time. So we host a live clinic every month on a Saturday, um, starts at 12 p.m. Eastern time and runs usually probably three to four hours on average. And we either deep dive into a specific technique or procedure um, you know, like we've done polishing on certain techniques on polishing. We've talked about machines with broken gears. We just did one on a necky rewiring the other day and Kenmore foot pedal. Um, or we take a machine off of our actual service queue when we go through it beginning to end so that while we're doing this live, you have the opportunity to ask questions in the moment, whether you need clarification on something or you just want to know more about something. So we do that every month. We do um, a live session every Wednesday, alternating 3 p.m. one week, 7 p.m. the next week. Um, and both of those sessions are recorded and the replays are always available. So even if you can't attend one of them live, you can still have questions ahead of time for us and we'll cover them in there if it needs a demonstration or what have you. We also offer you um, a live uh, private consultation each month. So if you have a machine that you're struggling with or a concept that you're having a hard time with, we can meet one-on-one -on -one through Zoom and we'll help you through whatever your specific issue is. So you don't have the pressure of an audience and we can just um, focus on what needs to be done. We do also um, record those sessions and we prefer to share them with the group because we all learn from each other, but you will always have access to that so that if you never, if you need to refer to it again, you have it. And then and eventually we take these sessions, we break them down and we add them into new modules into the learning library. So that's where the value always is increasing with our program. People ask about the technology. You really need a computer with an external webcam or a laptop or a tablet or a cell phone. That's it. Um, you'll have to install Zoom to uh, be part of our live programs, but it's a free program. It's super easy to use. Um, there's a link that you're going to click on to get into the Zoom classroom. It's not a whole bunch of fancy things. We do test that with you if you're uncomfortable and never used it before. Um, and you interact with all of us. So you interact with me. You'll get to know the people that, um, that are in the program with you. And then if needed, you have the ability to turn on your camera. And like if you have a cell phone, you can turn on your camera and use it to show us specifically on your machine what you're having. If that's not possible, we always have ways around it. But I can assure you that I'd say probably a good 25% of people coming into our program have never used Zoom before, and it's really a non-issue. So I just want to show you a little bit here what that looks like. Getting into um, the live Zoom call, it's just like going into a module. Um, when you enroll today, you'll see all of the dates coming up for the rest of the year for both Saturday and Wednesday sessions. There's a link inside each one. Um, it tells you the exact day and time, and when you click on it, it's going to give you the link. <clears throat> so when you click on the link, it'll launch. And then you'll be in there waiting like the rest of us. <laughs> and this is kind of what our, our Wednesday calls look like. Um, it's more social. Sometimes we just talk about sewing machines or aspects of the industry. I answer a lot of questions, whatever is needed at the moment. Um, but it's a very, very open and fun group. And then for our Saturday sessions, um, it's it looks a lot like watching a video. Um, this is from when we were talking about nylon gears and what to look for in these machines. So it's all through Zoom, but you can interact with us. So what you can see here just looks like a normal video. And just to give you a phone reference, if you're using the app, since this is brand new to us, the same thing. You just go into the module and there's a link to click right there on the right. You can see where it says Zoom. You would click that link and it would take you right into the live session. 
So we talked about what you have lifetime access to with the active membership, whether it's three, six, uh, or 12 months, you get two private consultations per month with Paul or, or myself. You get um, the monthly live Saturday clinics and the replays, the weekly live Wednesday sessions with the replays, the business tool sessions, um, with business promotion, I haven't had a chance to talk about this yet, but for those of you that are interested in building a small business or retirement income, we take, I think we probably get on average 15 to 20 emails a week from people all over the country asking if they can ship their machine to us for restoration or service. Um, that's no exaggeration. I got three this morning before we even started this. So I can't handle this much work. So what we're doing as we build our network across the United States, for those of you working in our program with our guidance, I would rather match those folks up with you in your area. And that way you're earning your income working with that person and you have our guidance. So you're not having that panicky feeling of like, I don't know if I can handle this. You're not going to have to handle it alone. So as with an active membership, we will pass on to you any machines that come in into, through your area. And then we have, so that's referrals of customers and machines in your area. And then we do pop-up events and sessions. So like I mentioned with the motor service and rewiring, we will do some pop-up sessions where we'll just schedule a day. And if you can be there, we'll, we'll work with you live. All right. So um, I wanted to show you a little bit more on what people have said about their experience. Melanie came into our program kind of thrown into um, the ocean for sink or swim. She retired, but her local um, sewing machine dealer was left high and dry without a technician. And so they offered to send her to um, Genomi training and she learned a lot about their computer systems, but not a whole lot about the actual mechanics of the machine. So she has joined our program to have assistance as she helps her customers. And she said, this is what makes my heart sing. She said, being a part of the vintage sewing machine uh, mastery validates everything I'm doing. There's almost no one else in my area for whom I can be, whom, who can be mentored and supported the way I am in this group. I'm grateful that for all that we're doing, but she uses us um, when she has a machine that she's not sure what to do. We're there to guide her. Uh, Pat Deacon says, I have always been mechanically inclined, but terrified of sewing machines because I didn't understand them. The Sewing Doc Academy classes are presented in a way that explains the how and why, which we are very adamant about. I don't want to just tell you do step A, B, and C. I also want to tell you why so you can build that intuitive nature. So the more I get into machines, the more confident I become and they don't scare me anymore. The best part is a real life person is available to answer questions and walk you through an issue, something that you two can't do. And then Julia joined us and said that in 2018, we drove for two 12 hour days over and two 12 hour days back for the closest sewing machine repair, repair class I could find. The class was a three day extended weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It was a good class with a huge volume of material and words that I've never heard before. So once back home, though, I didn't know where to begin. So she joined the academy. Um, she likes our videos, but for the same thing. I have no issues with any of the programs that exist. I know Ray White. I know a lot of them, and I think they are excellent programs, but they serve a certain purpose. Our program is meant to keep guiding you. You're not going to come here and take a two or three day workshop, have to take your brain overload and dump everything and then be on your own once you get home. It's literally meant for those that want to have continued support and guidance. All right, so I do want to mention um, all of our learning modules and handouts, they're copyright protected. So you cannot use our material to teach others. That means you can't sit through our modules, take all our information and teach a class to your quilt guild or to a small group. We do ask that you honor the amount of time and energy that has gone into building these programs. Um, and, and please help us to protect it. So please don't give out your login information. If you even work, if you're with a quilt guild and you would like a program, we can build something for you and work with you. Um, if you have, if you're building a business and you need to bring on another apprentice, then let us know because we can do discounted rates on, on things. But please, please honor how much work has gone into our programs. So that being said, I do want to be clear that any knowledge you use in our program, you can use to build a business. You can use your skills and your, your ability to offer services to your community. So we're here to support you in whatever your purpose is. Um, and a lot of that, I think a lot of people start by buying the cheap machines, bringing them back to life and selling them. But if you want to build a full scale service business, I am here to be your ally in that. <clears throat> all right, so to give you a little clarity, um, people ask all the time, 
um, because we are going to start guiding people from our restoration services into doing it themselves. Um, the cost for one service in our shop right now is $82 for a mechanical machine. That's cleaning, lubricating, adjustments if needed, which you almost never need on a vintage machine. Um, so if you're trying to get your machine serviced every year, year, you do the math. Restoration in our shop for a machine that has been neglected and even one that hasn't starts roughly around $250, which is the lowest entry cost into our program. So that's why we're trying to guide people into doing it themselves because I can't handle the volume anymore. Um, you will save time by not driving to and from a service shop. Um, you'll have clear instruction rather than searching the internet, which can be tireless and time consuming. And we wanna save you time and money by doing it right the first time. So I wanna give you a couple more examples. If you might have seen the video circulating that I did on this machine, I used this machine as a big example in the curriculum. So this machine came to us, it survived a house fire. I don't have the particular details, but it didn't have any water damage, but it was actually worse than that when we got it because it was covered in soot and I had to wipe it down. So on the left is the before and the right is the after. And this is the inside of the machine. So the picture on the left there is where the grease and the lubricant actually hardened and baked onto the metal. So the fire, the heat from the fire melted everything. And then as it cooled, it basically baked everything onto that metal. So that's my before and after. This gentleman got a serious discount because he let me use it to film for my workshop. So restoration for this machine, we charged $360, which that was such an undercharge, but it was so worth it. Um, and again, to get into our workshop, the lowest entry point is 250, 249. So here's another example. This is the um, a Singer 201 that I mentioned earlier with the potted motor. That's a picture of the potted motor if you're not familiar. It has the gear and the motor all in one component going into the back of the machine. So it has a very extensive service and rewiring task in it. In our shop, it's $82 for service. Um, this is actually, our prices have gone up, but service and rewiring was 180. So that's a $262 job on that machine, still cheaper to get into our workshop and have the information available to you. If you've seen my live Facebook series um, that I did earlier this year, this was such a good example. Um, back before I had so much work, I used to love trolling eBay and uh, Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, but it was still safe. And I would look for deals on machines that I knew that I could restore and turn around and sell. And this came up in a search. It's a Bernina record 930, which if you're a Bernina enthusiast, you know that Berninas hold their value. I don't care which model it is, they hold their value. This was listed for $50 because they doesn't have a power cord or foot pedal. And the person just said, I don't know if it works or not because I can't plug it in. If you know the inside of these machines, there's chance, there's a very slim chance it wouldn't work, but I would be willing to bet on a $50 Bernina. So on my math, it's $50 for the sewing machine. It's $65 for shipping. And I would make sure he shipped it right, by the way. $30 for the power cord. I know I can get a foot pedal for $80. That's going to bring $225 investment into that machine. But because I know the market and I know where what they go for, I know that I could do all that, clean the machine, lubricate it, and it's good to go. And I can sell it for between $600 and $1,000, depending on the market at the time. Those are the kinds of things that we teach you inside our program. So if you have an interest in going down that path, you're not going to have to make a guess by yourself if it's a good investment, if you can flip it, or what have you. As another short example, this was in my local area. I just did a search on Facebook Marketplace. Now, I know that most of us, some people don't know how to identify machines, but I can tell you that's a slant needle, probably a 400 series machine if I had to guess, but it's a slant needle and I know they hold their value too. They are selling it for $50, no cord or plugs, just the machine and the table. The chances of that machine not working after some care is slim to none. So on my math, $50 for my machine investment, then I know I can get a power cord for $15 or less a foot pedal for 35 and that's a hundred dollar total investment for that machine. And I can easily sell any slant needle series in the four or 500 for between 250 and 300 when it's all done. So those are just, again, those are some of the things we will help you with in our program. Our workshop pricing, if you haven't been on the website yet, to be clear, there are no beginner intermediate advanced levels. Whatever you come in, we meet you where you are. So you're not coming as a beginner or there's no labels on any of that. 
When your membership ends, you can extend by paying monthly or purchasing six or 12 months at a time. The thing is, though, that when, between our launches, um, our pricing does go up because we take all the things that we've taught and they become part of our curriculum and the value goes up. So our pricing goes up, which means it is cheaper to invest if you know you're going to need more than three months or you have a busy schedule. Um, it's cheaper to invest on the front end than it is to extend your, your benefits. Okay, so our enrollment period is open now and closes at midnight on Monday, August 29th. The reason that we limit our, our periods for enrollment is because we like to be able to make sure when you come into the program, you get sufficient one-on-one -on -one attention. Everybody is addressed. We don't like for people to fall through the cracks. So we do control our enrollment this way. Um, I don't know when our next enrollment will open, just depends on how things go. Um, again, if you enroll today, um, it'll be, you'll get our Blue Creeper, um, which I haven't really talked about yet. Uh, I'll go through this briefly. The reason why this is such a big deal is um, I love this product. Uh, it, it was developed in 2000, I think 16-ish. Um, it's a lubricating cleaner. So it's this little bottle here. It's, um, it takes me a long time to consider something new because I am a purist, like what works, works. Now, before this, kerosene was kind of your best bet, but why you own a quilt shop, like you can't just bring kerosene into the quilt shop, the fumes and the flammability, that's that's a terrible combination. So this has saved me. I use this in every single machine, modern, vintage, um, every machine. Um, Scott Kennedy worked with the company. He first um, started experimenting with it. The biggest thing is it's safe on the surface. So yes, you can put Blue Creeper, you can clean the entire surface of your machine. It won't silver decals. It doesn't wear away at the clear coat. But he started working with um, the company and they actually developed a sewing machine oil. So that's how wonderful this product is. It treats surface rust. So if you have a machine that's got some parts with a little bit of surface rust on it, this is going to stop the rust. It unsticks machines better I'd say there's still a need for kerosene once in a blue moon, but I have never had a machine I couldn't unseize with just Blue Creeper. So um, it's been our best, um, our best product ever. It was developed in the logging industry because people are out in these cold environments up in Vermont and wherever else they do logging. And they're out there with their chainsaws and they have to use this to keep um, their, their machines going. It just so happens that it works really well for sewing machines. And as I mentioned, um, unless you're doing a whole bunch of season machines, this bottle does last me about two to three months. And I do an, on average about 80 machines a month in service. Okay. So for enrollment, I broke it down again. That's your lifetime access and your active membership. Our pricing is $249. Um, you pay one time. This is, and you get three months membership. For a $3.99 one time, you get six months membership. And for a one-time payment of $5.99, you get a 12-month membership. And again, once that time ends, you, if you decide to um, carry on on your own and then come back a year later, we do have um, re-enrollment options for membership. Um, people ask all the time, how do you decide what's best for you? So my guidelines, and these are on the website if you need to examine further, but on the three-month membership, if you just have a couple of machines that you want to keep in good working order and you don't think you have any intentions of going like all the way down the path and taking in more machines, that's probably ideal for you. If you're curious and just like to dabble and learn um, or have some experience, if you've been through Ray White's workshop and you just kind of want to um, get a little more guidance or you've been really deep diving on YouTube, this might be a good place to start. For the six month membership, um, if you have machines that need extra care, especially motor and rewiring, you've, I would say give yourself plenty of lead time on motor and rewiring. Um, they are a challenge and mentally strenuous sometimes. Um, if you want to invest and you want to start by taking, you know, giveaway machines that people are giving away or finding them cheap and maybe doing them for charitable purposes. If you want to just um, learn to support, you know, church groups or senior centers, centers bleh, senior citizen centers, charities, anything of that nature. And then for the 12-month membership, if you have a busy schedule and you don't want that pressure of feeling like you have to cram everything into three months, it's ideal. Um, if you are considering building a side of retirement income or doing anything with machines long term, I highly recommend the 12 month membership. And if you want to know if you know that you want to have, um, you know, build your skills for a full service shop or a future career. And then if you just like having human assistance when hitting roadblocks, because you will have Paul and I as humans for the entire 12 months. So those are just our guidelines. 
for enrollment, it's on our website. You can either click through on sewingdocacademy.com. The, it's right there in the front or sewingdocacademy.com slash VSMM. And that's going to take you right to it. As you click through, you're going to see an opportunity, uh, the whole list of what's in the curriculum. But keep in mind, the curriculum is just the on demand. What you get in the live is pretty much any aspect that you ever ask us. So that is what I have. I'm going to do some questions if we have any. Let me stop sharing. Is there a questions? I have a few. All right. Let me get my screens closed. <laughs> Make sure you do that right. Okay. All right. The first question was from Kathleen. Uh -huh. Will you cover replacing light housing and electrical on featherweights? We can do that. Yes, we can. Um, we do have, and that's a good question. We do have a separate featherweight workshop. Now, the reason that that um, exists separately is because there are people that have a featherweight and they literally just want to know how to take care of that one machine. They don't care anything about any other machine. So that's a good, that one's only on demand. So that's good if you're just trying to maintain your machine and keep it going. In the vintage machine workshop, we do cover um, in our live stuff, more in-depth information on the featherweight. So the only way to get the live stuff for the featherweight is in this workshop. So we definitely, assuming Paul's okay with it, because he's the one that handles electrical, um, we will handle uh, rewiring on the featherweights. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Jan asked, does the course include machines with plastic cartridges for various stitch types? I'm assuming she's talking like fashion discs and cams. Um, yeah. So if you mean fashion discs, like I wish I just had some with it. If it means like cams that are the plastic ones that you put in, yes. If it's an actual like computer card, then probably no. Um, who was that that asked? Jan. Jan, if you would, uh, if you'd like to, on our website, I do have my email link on there. If you have pictures that you'd like to send us for anybody, if you have machines that you're curious about, if they're eligible or would they be good to do, do in this workshop, I'm always happy to give you a free consultation. And I will tell you yes or no. I won't, I won't beat around the bush on that. So, um, so if it's just like cams and discs, we definitely cover that. Yeah. Um, Pat asks, are treadle machines also covered in the course? Oh, yes, Pat. We have a whole group of treadle lovers. <laughs> uh, and we actually haven't gotten as far on treadles as we want to because we just hadn't gotten there. But um, we are going to, we're about ready to do um, a filming series on how to handle the treadle irons and all of that good stuff um, and how to put the belts on. But we're, we have, I think almost everybody in the workshop either has a treadle they're working on or is interested. So we will definitely do that. Yeah. Okay. And then Brenda asked, as extra modules and updates are completed, will they be available only to active members or will there be an opportunity for lifetime members to do add-ons? That's a good question, Brenda. So when we add now just the live portions um, and the assistance, that's what's in the membership. When we do those live Saturday sessions, um, it admittedly takes me a while to do it, but we do break those down and they become modules so that what we're teaching, like what we're teaching in those workshops now um, in a few months, they'll be available in the curriculum and you have lifetime access to the curriculum. So that's kind of the reason why our value raises. You don't have to cover them all in a live workshop. They do become modules that you have access to for life, if that makes sense. And then we will, what, what the other thing is, like I said, with the business tools, for those that want to do long term, we're actually building for next year what we call a virtual apprenticeship. So whether you're working on vintage or modern, we'll be able to have a community of all of us learning together that's, um, for those of you that are going long-term, we'll also have a membership option there too, but you will get the, um, the, the modules for life. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. And then I see Brenda said, I think you may have had the same class as Julia. Yeah, I understand. I know. And, and just so you know, I am not, I do not hate on any other programs out there. Every one of them has their place. There's not enough, but um, the reason that we are um, doing this the way we are, again, it's it really comes down to you, if it's the shortcut. I mean, I'm not trying to say I'm selling you a shortcut like it's going to happen overnight, but going through YouTube videos and um, and and just go, trying to find an information like you might find a great video with info, but the the, the lighting is terrible and you can't see and his arms in the way or whatever. And then for the programs, you have to go. And I, I've been to a program. I went many years ago and I thought it was fantastic while I was in it. And then I got home and, you know, you're, I go to a quilt shop and take a class and my brain dumps everything by the time I leave. I go to lunch and then it's all gone. So we're meant to be here for the long term. So when you go into um, taking on a new machine, you're not sitting there having to scratch your head of like having that 
lack of confidence. So we're just a little bit different than the other programs. So again, if you, anybody has any questions, I'm happy to assist you. I'm happy to answer specific questions. If you'd like to get on a Zoom call even and talk face-to-face, -face, I'm happy to do that too. So I appreciate you all for joining us today. Um, and I hope that we get to, to work together. And um, I, I will see you. All right.